is a Shaw Sports presentation. And a good day, race fans, and welcome to exclusive coverage of NHRA Drag Racing at Labatt Raceway on Shaw. I'm Labatt Raceway track announcer. Some drivers have it, some drivers don't. The drivers here today definitely have it. Pro Mods, Top Alcohol Dragsters, Top Alcohol Funny Cars, Super Gas, Super Comp, and more coming your way in the coverage of drag racing here at the track. And stand by, we have got first round action in the Pro Mods coming up next on Shaw. At the age of 45, some people experience a midlife crisis. At about the same time, a lot more people get something far more serious, diabetes. If you're overweight or sedentary, you're at risk. Please call the Canadian Diabetes Association because you need to know. And welcome back, race fans. Exclusive race coverage here of NHRA Drag Racing on Shaw. We have got the first round of the Promots. We've already had the first pass of the afternoon. During that commercial break, we will take a look at the highlight here of that first pass in just a couple of moments between Vern Mills and Glenn Solly. We've got Tim Vogt and Len Lavasseur up on deck right now. Tim Vogt out of Regina, Saskatchewan. Len Lavasseur out of Edmonton. And I guess we are ready now to go to that quick, quick highlight of the first pass of the Promots in round number one right now. That's Vern Mills in the Bel Air taking out Glenn Solly with a 694 at 206.51 miles an hour. Glenn Solly from Regina, a 741 at 192.76 miles an hour. Right now, though, from Regina, Tim Vogt, as we take a look at one of his crew members opening up the door on these door slammers. That's another name for the Pro Mods. And that 94 Corvette. Len Lavasseur, he is down on horsepower today. He does not have the uh, nitrous on his race car yet. So uh, Tim Vogt, as you can hear that hissing sound, that's Tim Vogt bleeding the nitrous on that 94 Corvette. Tim Vogt, one of the faster cars on the, in this ProMod field, taking on Len Lavasseur, and here we go. Second pass of the day in the ProMod class. This is round number one. And already Tim Vogt, but a four, oh boy, and popping the shoot early by accident is Len Lavasseur. Tim Vogt runs through with a 719 at 190.96 miles an hour. Lavasseur, an 827, 152.10 miles an hour. I'm sure the uh, shoot, which was accidentally popped, did not help things out at all. So Tim Vogt will move into the semifinals, the final four. We've got two cars in the semis already. Vern Mills from Missoula, Montana, Tim Vogt. One of these two drivers is hoping to make it into the semifinals as well. And we have all the way from Missoula, Montana in the far lane. That is Sean Wells behind the wheel of that 91 Camaro. Veteran driver in the Pro Mod class, but doing this almost 10 years. And a newcomer to the Pro Mod class for the 1998 season. It is Tom Mahedden from Calgary in that 94 Beretta. Here's a good shot of it there, Carter. One of the uh, proud sponsors, that's a car dealership in Calgary. But Tom Mahedden was running Super Comp for the past few seasons, finishing the top five. Last year decided, hey, over the winter months, I'm gonna build me a Pro Mod car, put the bigger motor in the 94 Beretta. And here he is in round number one action in the Pro Mods. This could be an upset. It could be, but Sean Wells would have to make an awful mistake for Tom Ahedden to win in this round. It's Tom Ahedden, Sean Wells, another pairing of Pro Mods right now, and a mistake. There's your mistake I was talking to you about. Sean Wells jumps the gun and red lights, giving the win to Tom Ahedden. Crosses the finish line at a 781 at 176.81 miles an hour. You see the mistake in the replay, jumping the gun, which means he left the start line before the green go light was flashed. So the newcomer in the Pro Mod class, off to the semis, and that's Tom Mahed. Speaking of newcomers, yet another newcomer to the Pro Mod series here. And that is Perry Thier from Drayton Valley. He's made his way up through the ranks from Pro into Super Pro, and behind the wheel of the Camaro. It is 
Perry fear, but he has got his hands full big time. He looks over his left-hand shoulder, and he sees that 96 Chevy pickup of Glenn Kerensky. Kerensky is your number one qualifier here today, the fastest truck on the lot. He's never faced Perry Thier before. Uh, no, I haven't. No, uh, this is the first time I'll be racing Perry, and normally uh, he, he's not in the association we're racing normally, which is the West Coast Association, so this will be the first. So your number one qualifier in the Pro Mod class here today behind the wheel of that pickup, Glenn Kerensky from Britis, just outside of Calgary, and Perry Thier. Kerensky, you bet. A uh, little too much for Perry Thier going on for the big win, a 701. 194.13 miles an hour. Thier, he actually got out of shape at the start with a 1059, 104.40 miles an hour. Good look at the replay. It is commercial time here on Shaw. Back with some funny cars. Cable, the fastest way to unleash the power of the Internet. Internet, the ultimate source for news, communication, and entertainment. Revolution makes the impossible possible. Join the cable internet revolution today. Call now for at home. Order now, 1-888-467-6990. Or visit our website at shaw.home.com. This is exclusive coverage of the 1998 JB's Power Center. Fall spectacular here on Shaw, as promised. Top alcohol, funny card time. Just starting that 526 cubic inch, Keith. Black, Hemi, that is the team of John Evanchuk out of Edmonton. He will be taking on close personal friend in the funny car scene. Daryl Webb also out of Edmonton. One of these two drivers goes to the final a little later on in this broadcast. The warm-ups, the burnouts right now. shot of the Rush Hour race team, that Red Wolf funny car, the 97 Olds Cutlass. Daryl Webb, the burnout king in Western Canada. You're going to see why right now. Great look at burnout from Daryl Webb. The crowd on their feet during the burnouts of these funny cars. Fan favorite for those burnouts. It is Daryl Webb, but already, though, he does have his hands full taking on John Evanchuk here this afternoon. John Evanchuk, second year behind the wheel of this race car, got into it a couple of years ago and is loving every minute of it. Now, one of the reasons why the drivers do the burnout is to heat up those rear racing slicks. At the peak of the burnout, the temperature of those uh, rear racing slick reaches around 850, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the rubber is nice and soft. They also laid rubber down on the uh, racing surface, and that is what they are trying to line themselves over right now as they get the best in traction. And an instant acceleration as they make their way down the quarter mile because one thing you don't want to do is spend your time at the start line spinning those tires. Daryl Webb in the far lane. John Evanchuk will be meeting Glenn Whitehead, who uh, moments ago took out Terry Cap. Footage that we are unable to bring you during this broadcast. We'll be seeing uh, Terry Cap a little later on in this broadcast. Because there is a funny car consolation. The loser of this round will take on the loser of uh, round number one, the previous pairing of funny cars. Both these drivers do not want to be in the consolation. Daryl Webb, John Evanchuk, second pairing of funny cars. The RPMs come up to around 4,000. Darrell Webb had the better reaction time, but the horsepower is taking over for John Evanchuk. He'll cross the line first with a 651, 212.01 miles an hour. Darrell Webb at 758, 182.55 miles an hour. 
So John Evanchuk will go to the final. He will take on Glenn Whitehead. Terry Cap and uh, Daryl Webb will make up the Funny Car Constellation. And we will see that a little later on in uh, this broadcast. It's a good try by Daryl Webb, but the horsepower is what got him. Darrell Webb only has a 468 cubic inch motor. So the cube difference between these two race cars. Another reason why to ET, very important. The elapsed time as far as how long it takes for you to get from the start line to the finish line. And horsepower definitely adds to the ET and to who is going to win the big race. Well, we've got something for you right now which people in the states have yet to see this is sort of a, uh, a warm-up race a little later on in this broadcast it is going to be quite the treat a funny car versus a dragster it's going to be an exhibition run a little later on a match race between a funny car and a dragster but down in the states they're going to experiment with that in 1999 so in this regard we here in Canada, especially here at Labatt Raceway, sort of one step ahead of the Americans for a change. And a veteran driver behind the wheel of the Reese's. Top alcohol funny car from Calgary. Good looking burnout from Vern Schultz. Rory Christensen is the owner of this race car. We will see him behind the wheel of this car next year. This is a brand spank of new funny car. This is the first year it has been run. Last year it was mainly a show car for the fine folks at Reese. Brand new race car and oh, we're having some problems getting that race car into reverse. Vern Schultz from Calgary in that 93 Dodge Daytona. It is also powered by a 526 cubic inch Keith Flag Hemi pumping out just a little over 2,000 horsepower. There we go. Slammed it into reverse, Vern Schultz. Now, Vern is uh, driving blind going backwards. He obviously has to keep those front wheels straight. We will see crew members jumping into the picture here shortly, directing Vern Schultz to line up that race car directly over the rubber, which he just laid down. Now, Vern Schultz, we'll be seeing him a little later on in this broadcast, taking on Steve Sitko in his Federal Mogul Top Alcohol Dragster. And Steve Sitko will be doing his warm-up pass in just a little bit as well. But this makes up one car of the rather unique funny car versus top alcohol dragster grudge race. Bert Schultz is going to try and to do his best in his quarter-mile pass here. Bert Schultz, as I mentioned, the veteran racer in the funny car scene, he used to own his own race car several years ago and decided I think maybe the best way is to find someone who owns their own race car and see if I could drive for them. And uh, Rory Christensen who owns this Reese's Alcohol Funny Car team has found a definite winner in Vern Schultz. Vern Schultz ends up, inches up to the starting line. That's uh, Rory Christensen there. They will break that first beam of light to pre-stage this race car. And then you will see Vern inch up just a little bit further to stage his car. Our starting head will click the switch, and away Vern goes down the track. RPMs come up, and away goes Vern Schultz. Uh, reaction time didn't show up on the screen this time. Anyway, at the finish line, the important numbers, a 7.60 at 173.37 miles an hour for Vern Schultz. A good run for him in this brand spanking new alcohol funny car. I'm sure team owner Rory Christensen will be very, very happy with that car. And uh, the fine folks from Reese will put their name on this car. Good choice. Nice looking replay as he crosses the finish line, closing in on 175 miles an hour. Good crowd on hand here for this JB's Power Center Fall Spectacular here at Labatt Raceway. 
taking in all the exciting action here. We've got uh, still lots of racing to come here on Shaw. We've got Super Comp, Super Gas, Super Pro, Pro, Sportsman, and Motorcycle action yet to come here in the broadcast in this first ever drag race to be broadcast to Edmontonians, a local drag race in particular. Folks who usually watch TNN, the Nashville Network, get their fill of NHRA drag racing south of the border. And it's sure nice that Shaw has come out here this afternoon to cover local motorsports in our own backyard. You can hear another race car coming to life in the background. Now, it's not a race per se. This is Danny Filia out of Edmonton. NHRA specifies that you must hold a competitor's license in order to compete at any NHRA drag or sanctioned facility. And Danny Billion says, well, I want to be one of those people. Danny Billion going for his competitor's license, his competition license, in the alcohol funny car class. Trial and error is the name of this federal mogul top alcohol funny car. Danny Billion going to uh, light up those Goodyear Racing Slicks right now. Now, a typical licensing weekend for a newcomer in some of the classes that require a uh, competitor's license. Six passes are needed. This is pass number three for Danny Billion. Uh, we won't be covering all of them in the uh, time constraints that we have. Now, pass number three will consist of the controlled burnout, which we have just seen. Danny Billion uh, did very, very well in that burnout. Again, he's a brand new racer. Drivers that already have their competition license are watching this pass by Danny Billion right now, and they'll be watching his uh, the remaining passes this afternoon because they signed their name on the application form that is sent down to Glendora, California, home of the NHRA. Pass number one earlier on today was just a burnout. Stage the vehicle, hard launch, and then shut the car off immediately and coast down the rest of the drag strip. Pass number two in this licensing attempt. Again, burnout, staging, hard launch, a little bit further down the quarter mile NHRA drag strip and then shutting it down before the halfway point of the track and coasting the rest of the way. This is pass number three for Danny Billion. And what he will consist of again is the burnout. We've just seen it. He will move up to the start line, stage this funny car, hard launch, head down the track. And then about the halfway point of the quarter mile, he will lift off the throttle and then coast his way across the finish line. Passes four, five, and six. Well, you sort of get the picture already. They will just sort of increase as far as where he goes down the quarter mile. This last pass of the day will be a full quarter mile run. But this is his third number, or pass number three of the day. And he's going to shut her down at about the halfway point in his run down the quarter mile. It's a licensing pass for Danny Billion. You'll hear the RPMs come up. He will stage, pop the clutch, and away he goes down the track. And away goes Danny. Reaction time. Not showing. And uh, as expected, shutting it off at halfway point on the track. Crossing the finish line. Coasting, I might add, at 9.31 seconds. Coasting at 102.81 miles an hour. Pass number three of his licensing attempt here this afternoon. He'll have three more in the day. So uh, good luck to uh, him and his attempts at getting his Top Alcohol Funny Car competition license. Better grab a cool one. We've hit the big 9.5 and it's only totally getting hotter. Can't follow your team from where you live? Now you can with NFL Sunday Ticket. You can follow your favorite teams and more all season long. NFL Sunday Ticket. We've got your game. And welcome back, race fans. Exclusive coverage of the 1998 JB's Power Center Fall Spectacular here at Labatt Raceway on Shaw. I'm track announcer Gord Craig, the sound of Nitro in the air. This is the fastest 
top fuel motorcycle in Canada, and it's based here in Edmonton. Ken Kent and the Harley Davidson of Edmonton sponsor Top Fuel Harley. He's going to warm up the tires for you right now. Kenny Kent, about three weeks ago, ran 202 miles an hour in British Columbia. Now, the conditions that we have here at the facility this afternoon, not quite track record setting conditions. The sun is just starting to peak through those clouds. But the current track record in the top fuel motorcycle here at the track, 187 miles an hour, 7.01 seconds. Kenny Kent, if he gets in the high 170 mile an hour range, I think he'll be very happy. And away goes Kenny Kent, reaction time is 7.54. Cruising along about 150 miles an hour and half track at the finish line. A 781, 177.02 miles an hour on two wheels. Kenny Kent out of Edmonton on that top fuel. Harley Davidson. Good run for him considering the conditions. I think he'll be very, very happy with that run here this afternoon. And uh, hopefully he was trying to set a track record here today. And that is his last pass of the day. And uh, not quite. A good start of the replay. As Kenny Kent makes his way down the track. In fact, uh, the first uh, 100, 200 or so feet, the front wheel is lifted off the ground. It is commercial time here at Shaw. And we'll be back. Hey, Steve! Can't follow your team from where you live? How's the wife and kids? <laughs> now you can with NFL Sunday Ticket. You can follow your favorite teams and more all season long. NFL Sunday Ticket. We've got your game. Hey, little guy, would you go? Well, from two wheels, we go back to four wheels now. Semi-final action in the Pro Mods here at Labad Raceway. And as you can see, the sun has come out and that is good news for all our competitors and for those of you at home and for the folks here in the grandstand who are wanting to see faster speeds if the track's going to heat up that will allow for increased speeds at the finish line here we've got semi-final action in the pro mod class right now your number one qualifier Glenn Kurunski in that 96 Chevy pickup taking on Vern Mills in that beautiful Chevy Bel Air one of these two drivers goes into the final. Glenn Kurunski, the number one final or qualifier, as I mentioned, the early favorite of the day by the driver that could take him out. That's who Kurunski is facing in the far lane. That is Vern Mills. No smoky burnouts to heat up those rear racing slicks to give them added traction. At the start line, when they hit that accelerator pedal hard, they don't want to be sitting there spinning their tires. They want to head down the track right now. Because in this race, it is a battle of ET or elapsed time. The time it takes in seconds to get from the start line to the finish line. Hey, sure, having uh, the mile per hour is nice, but it's ET that determines the wins and the losses in NHRA drag race. And there's a good shot of a burn at Mills. Sort of a Can-Am battle. Canada versus the USA. Mills, USA, Karunski. And that is Canada. Promod semi-final. One of these two drivers in to the final. Now, a burnout is very, very important. If you don't do a good enough burnout, you could lose traction at the start line, which would possibly and could make you lose control if you leave the uh, start line extra hard. But uh, a couple of good burnouts there by both our two drivers, Mills and Kerensky. And they will inch up to the start line. You can see the wisp of vapor. That is Kerensky leading the nitrous system. He wants nothing but pure nitrous being injected into the motor of his, his race car. About 2,000 horsepower for Kerensky. 1,800 horsepower for Mills. And they are away. Oh, Mills gets sideways. And that gives the win to Glenn Kerensky. And I saw some smoke and some flame coming up from underneath the race truck of uh, Glenn Kerensky. I'm hoping that is not serious. He runs a 698. 
uh, Vil Mills coasting for 14.69 at 53.55 miles an hour. Glenn Kerensky had great ET. He had great traction all the way down the quarter mile. But he lost some horsepower right at the finish line and thus the slower speed for him. He was heading well over 200 miles an hour. But he ended up with a 187.53 miles an hour. Saw a puff of smoke and some flame underneath that race car. I'm hoping it is not serious. Keep a lookout uh, in the far lane with Vern Mills getting out of shape right about now. Little counter steering maneuver there from Vern Mills. And he gets things up and under control once again. But Vern Mills, his day is done. Glenn Kerensky into the final. Now Kerensky is going to face one of these two competitors. Will it be Tim Vogt from Regina, Saskatchewan in that beautiful 94 Corvette Pro Mod? Or will he be taking on the newcomer in the Pro Mod scene? Tom Mahedden out of Calgary. Tom Mahedden had that upset win over Sean Wells. Mahedden again his rookie year in the Pro Mod class would love to upset another newcomer or a, another veteran in the Pro Mod scene in a brand new race car. And that is Tim Vogt. Game final check. One of the unique uh, rules of the Pro Mod class is they have to have operating doors. And as far as the engine size is concerned, anything goes. We've got uh, vehicles out here this weekend with as high uh, cubic inches as about 750 cubic inches underneath the hood of that race car. One of these two drivers into the final. Who will it be? Mahedden or Vogt? We'll find out in about uh, seven seconds or so. Both drivers are away. Slight reaction time advantage to Tim Vogt. Tim Vogt will go on to win. Running a 7.12, 191.48 miles an hour. Tom Mahedden, good run from him. A 7.85, 176.09 miles an hour. So Tim Vogt makes up the other half of the final in the Pro Mod class here at Labatt Raceway this afternoon as the replay shows you well out in front of the runner-up in that round of Tom Mahedden. Now we saw the pass earlier on from the Reese Funny Car driven by Vern Schultz. Here is who he will be facing a little later on in the broadcast, Steve Sitko. This is the fastest car on the racetrack here today, running well in excess of 220 miles an hour in his pass on uh, qualifying day Saturday. This is a Sunday afternoon event here when all the finals are run. Steve Sitko out of Edmonton, Bran Spankin, new dragster, and they've had nothing but success with this race car. Normally when you hear a brand new race vehicle, problems, glitches, breakdowns, not so with this brand new 98 Arctic chassis, tra or Arctic uh, chassis. Steve Sitko out of Edmonton. 2,500 horsepower coming to life. Directly behind him. As you can see, it is so brand new. They haven't had a chance to uh, put a paint job on this race car yet. They do have all the supporting sponsors on that car. It is a top alcohol dragster. Sitco will take on a top alcohol funny car a little later on in the broadcast. As I mentioned, Sitco going to do his time trial lap right now. He will inch forward and drive through the water box area where just uh, regular water is uh, lying. Put the pedal to the metal and bring those rear tires to life. Keep a close eye. It just shows you how much centrifugal force. These tires are going to get nice and skinny. Burnout now is complete. And Sitco will back that federal mogul top alcohol dragster and uh, line it up on the rubber, uh, the rubber that he just laid down during that smoky burnout. 
I don't know about you watching at home, but with Steve Sitko running in the high 200 mile or the high 220 mile an hour range, the funny car, which he will face a little bit later on, the Reese's team definitely has their hands full. I know they're watching this right now just to see what uh, they have uh, to go up against in the funny car versus dragster grudge. I'm looking forward to it. As I mentioned earlier, they're going to be experimenting with it in the States in 1999, Canada, specifically Labatt Raceway, sort of ahead of the game. And having a funny car versus dragster matchup this afternoon, and you're going to see it here on Shaw. Test and tune run. For Steve Sitko, the RPM to come up to around 4,000. He will stage his car. Our starter flicks the switch, and away he goes down the track. Steve Sitko is away. And at the finish line, he runs himself a 6.22. That is the fastest speed of the day so far. 223.82 miles an hour for Steve Sitko. Bring on the funny car, says Steve Sitko. That battle in just a little bit. It is super gas time, semifinals now. And that is Mike Priddle heading down the quarter mile. Mike Priddle indexed at 10, 11. I'll explain the index in just a couple of moments. Mike Priddle out of St. Albert, index is 10, 11. Now you see what he ran, he ran 10 seconds flat. Now that's quicker than what the index is. The index is what is set down by NHRA. It specifies that this is what you have to run in the quarter mile. Don't go faster than 10, 11. Mike Priddle did just that, but it was a single run. He's into the final now. He'll make the adjustments on his race car. So we'll see Mike Priddle in just a little bit. One of these two drivers now goes to the final. Will it be Dave Archambault from Calgary or Fred Schwab from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan? Reaction time on the board. Archambeau has the early advantage. Index is 10-11. Remember, you can't go faster than it. And Dave Archambeau runs the index. Bang on. And that's good enough for him for the win. Fred Schraub runs a 10-12 mile per hour difference. Look at that. 124.05 miles an hour to 145.46 miles an hour. Dave Archambeau. Mike Friddle, final in super gas. And that is coming up next. We got the semifinals now in the Super Pro class. This is a bracketed class. What the bracket class means, we take a look at the replay of the start in the Super Gas semifinal. Archambeau just a slight advantage at the start line. What a bracketed class is during time trials, each and every one of our competitors does a time trial and they figure out what their vehicle will run in the quarter mile. That is called the dial-in time. The dial-in times are in brackets. Rose thinks his car will run 11.26 in the quarter mile. Motor Sean a 10.04 in the quarter mile. This is going to be a close finish. Who wins it? Garnet Rose wins it, running his dial-in time with an 11.26 at 115.15 or 10 miles an hour. He is in the Acadian convertible. Motor Sean running a 10.06. Right at the finish line, that's Garnet Rose picking up that big win, and he moves in to the final. Here's Rick Ball, single, dialed in with a 10-0-2. This can almost be an experimental run for Rick Ball from Slave Lake, Alberta. Reaction time of 5-14, good reaction time. 5-0-0 is perfect on the Christmas line strike tree. And he runs himself, oh, a 10 Zero, two. Garnet Rose ran his dial-in time. Rick Ball ran his dial-in time. That's your final. And that'll be coming up in just a little bit in the Super Pro class. What a race we have going here this afternoon at Labad Raceway. We move into the Super Comp class now. This is not a bracketed class. It is an indexed class set down by the NHRA. Now, it's similar to a bracket uh, time-in. But a 909 is the index for Super Comp set down by the NHRA. The NHRA says in the Super Comp class at Labatt Raceway, you cannot go faster than this time, 909. So these Super Comp cars and the indexed Super Gas cars filled with electronic equipment to sort of slow down their race car 
And it all comes down to mathematics, driver skill, driver reaction time, car setup. It's just amazing. The index, you can see it on your monitor. We've got Brian Bond from Calgary, Kevin Kalatichuk from Vernon, British Columbia on his holidays, making his way here to Labad Raceway this afternoon. Brian Bond, though, has the reaction time advantage. Can he hang on for the win? Well, what happened there was both drivers went faster than the 909 index. Kalatichuk, as you can see him closer to the index on the breakout side of things, Kalatichuk with the wing, the Super Comp Dragster, will win that elimination round because he was closer to the index. Although Brian Bond had him from the start. Brian Bond crosses the finish line first, but unfortunately he breaks out in doing so. And that's a bad break for Brian Bond. So Kevin Kalatichuk from Vernon, British Columbia goes to the final in the Super Comp class. He will meet one of these two drivers coming up to the start line right now. From Olds, Alberta, you're looking at him right now, Byron Ziegler. And he is taking on a local driver, Tony Ellett, in the far lane out of Edmonton. Super Comp index again is 909. Don't go faster than it. Both drivers are away, and Byron Ziegler in the near lane, the better reaction time. And in the end, it is still Byron Ziegler picking up the big win because both drivers break out or go faster than the posted index of 909. Ellett, a 903. Ziegler, a 907. And because he was closer to the 909 index, Ziegler goes into the final in our Super Comp class here this afternoon. So we have got Kevin Kalatichak from British Columbia, Byron Ziegler from Olds making up our finalists in a Super Comp class. We will see that in just a little bit. Semi-final time now in the motorcycle class. The winningest rider on two wheels here at the track. You just had a good look at him. That is Kevin Boyer out of Edmonton on board his 82 Suzuki drag bike. George Stegerman from Leduc is who Boyer will be facing an 83 Suzuki drag bike. They're going to warm up the wheels right now. Good shot of Kevin Boyer. Stegerman just wrapping up his burn. I know Kevin Boyer, three track championships in a row, 93, 94, 95 season championships here at this facility. The last two years, he has run a limited race season here at Labad Raceway. He is uh, running Division Six events, and at the time of this event, he was currently second in points in Division Six. Uh, Division Six has races all over the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia, down in the States as well. It's a dial-your-own class also. Stegerman, an 1101, he will leave first. Kevin Boyer will try and play catch up with an 884 re uh, dial-in time, reaction time. Kevin Boyer should pass George Stegerman right at the finish line. He catches him. Wow, Stegerman breaks out. That didn't help his uh, efforts in winning that elimination round either. Stegerman figured he would run 1101 in that elimination round. He broke out running a 1097, and that gave Kevin Boyer. The win. So Kevin Boyer moves into the final in the motorcycle class, and he will move up against one of these two riders. Dave Weeb in the far lane. He's had four final round appearances in a row. Can this be number five this afternoon? Dave Weeb going up against Rob Richardson. Weeb out of Edmonton. Richardson out of Spruce Grove. Dave Weeb, the better reaction time. Richardson will have a heck of a time making that up. Dave Weave crosses the finish line, picks up the win with a 10.31 on his 10.25 dial-in at 115.65 miles an hour. Rob Richardson dialed in with a 9.85. He ran a 9.90. Taxi! Taxi! Ta Yo! Cabman! Can't follow your team from where you live? Now you can with NFL Sunday Ticket. Hey, is there a special... Hand signal that I don't know. I mean, you can follow your favorite teams and more all season long. NFL Sunday Ticket. We've got your game. Did not give you a twenty. And welcome back, race fans. It is final time here on Shaw for the JV's Power Center Fall Finals here at Labatt Raceway. Now, uh, during the semifinals. 
that puff of smoke and flame we saw from beneath Glenn Kerensky's 96 Pro Mod Chevy pickup was terminal. Therefore, the winner has been declared. Tim Vogt in the near lane in that 94 Corvette Pro Mod. Congratulations to Tim Vogt, the big winner here this weekend. And the Pro Mod Association said, well, we're not going to have just one car going down the track to claim the victory. Uh, for the fans at home, for the fans in the grandstands, putting up his hand right away was a Vern Mills. Vern Mills from Missoula, Montana, Bel Air. He says, well, I didn't uh, perform very well in my semifinal loss to Glenn Kurunski. Can I have another shot at it, please? And uh, Vern Mills uh, is joining Tim Vogt, although this is more of an exhibition race. Tim Vogt has been the weekend winner here. We'll call this the Pro Mod Final Part 2, as you can see, the white vapor that's bleeding of the nitrous. Tim Vogt. From Regina, Saskatchewan, 94 Corvette Pro Mod, we have got Vern Mills from Missoula, Montana, that 55 Chevy Bel Air Pro Mod. This should be a good race. The sun is out. The track is now heated up tremendously, giving some added traction to these race cars, and away they go. Final in the Pro Mod class. Oh, it is neck and neck. All the way to the finish line. Who takes it? Tim Vogt, even though he has the slower ET, a 706 at 192.38 miles an hour, he crossed the finish line first. Vern Mills did not have the better reaction time, and he could not make that up. Maybe if the track was an extra 100 feet in length, he would have. Vern Mills running the quicker 702 at 203.52 miles an hour, not enough. But uh, what a run by those two drivers. Tim Vogt, your winner in the Pro Mod, your runner-up. Vern Mills. It is funny car time. As mentioned, this is the uh, funny car consolation race. Two of the drivers that were eliminated from uh, earlier competition today are back for the funny car consolation. Good shot of the Goodwrench Service Plus car driven by Terry Cap out of St. Albert. Courthouse Inn and Red Deer, another proud sponsor of that race car. Terry Camp lost to Glenn Whitehead earlier on in the day. But he is back to take on Daryl Webb, who's doing his burnout right now, who lost to John Evanchuk earlier on in the day. King of the burnouts, that is the reason why a burnout just passed the halfway point of this racetrack. Terry Cap after his burnout, now backing his good wrench old alcohol funny car. Gets set to make his way down the quarter mile. You can see the inside of that race car filled with tire smoke. Terry Cap, the only race car driver in Canada who has his competition license in three classes. Now we saw earlier on in this broadcast one of the drivers going for his alcohol funny car license. Terry Kappa holds his license in top fuel dragster, nitro funny car, and alcohol funny car. So a uh, well-traveled race car driver. Terry Kapp in the Good Ranch Service Plus machine taking on Daryl Webb in the far lane. Now Daryl Webb again down on horsepower. Over 500 cubic inch, Terry Capps race car. Daryl Webb about uh, in the middle of the 400 range. Daryl Webb has the better reaction time, but the horsepower now is taking over for Terry Cap. Picks up the win with a 731, 163.33 miles an hour. Daryl Webb, your runner-up in the Funny Car Consolation, running a 752 at 183.78 miles an hour, but a car length lead for Terry Cap right at the finish line. Daryl Webb did have the race lead briefly at the start line as he had the better reaction time, but in the end, it was Terry Cap picking up the win. Here is your funny car final here at Labatt Raceway this afternoon. Our first opportunity to see that 97 Pontiac Formula Firebird top alcohol funny car. In the far lane of Glenn Whitehead from Grandora, Saskatchewan, 542 cubic inch Keith Black Hemi. 
he will be going up against a relative newcomer to the alcohol funny car scene. In fact, both these drivers have uh, less than three years of experience behind the wheel of an alcohol funny car. John Evanchuk out of Edmonton in the Rush Hour race team. The Red Wolf funny car quick to become a fan favorite in the Edmonton area as well. It's burnout time. Watch for these two drivers in the next few years to excel and increase in the uh, speed department. As Glenn Whitehead completes his burnout, John Evanchuk already backing up the roof hatch opens up to let a little bit of that tire smoke escape from the racing compartment. Gotta love funny car racing here at Labad Raceway. And these are two of the best at the track today. John Evanchuk and Glenn Whitehead. This is going to be a very close race. Uh, earlier on in the day, Glenn Whitehead ran a 672, 212.91 miles an hour to take out Terry Cap. John Evanchuk ran a 651, 212.01 miles an hour. So as you can see, these two funny cars, pretty equal as far as the output is concerned. Look for the exact same thing in the funny car final right now. Final checks are complete. They've lined themselves up on the rubber that they had just laid down during that smoky burnout. That's the best traction you can get. They will inch up to the start line. You will hear the RPMs come up to around 4,000. And then they will stage those vehicles. Our starter, Ed, will flick the switch, and away they go down the quarter mile. Here you go. Funny car final right now. Oh boy, this is close. Slight advantage to Glenn Whitehead. Oh, nipping him at the finish line is John Evanchuk with a 6.66 second run, 214.59 miles an hour. Glenn Whitehead, oh, he almost had it with a 681, 213.47 miles an hour. I said it was gonna be a close race. Indeed, it was. Replay at the finish line. Less than a car length lead and win for John Evanchuk. Unbelievable final in the funny car class. Congratulations to John Evanchuk. Glenn Whitehead, your runner-up. As promised, something that the United States will get to see in 1999. You at home and folks here at the racetrack are getting to see it right now. A dragster versus a funny car. This is a grudge race. This will be neat. We've got Steve Sitko in the Federal Mogul Top Alcohol Dragster taking on Vern Schultz in the Reese's Sponsored Federal Mogul Top Alcohol Funny Car. In qualifying runs you saw earlier on today, Steve Sitko set the fast time of the day. So early advantage will go and has to go really to Steve Sitko in the performance we've seen uh, thus far. Both these vehicles brand spanking new. Rory Christensen owns the uh, Reese's team, and they've had some problems with that race car. Of course, with new race vehicles, uh, you do expect problems. And Steve Sitko, driver of the top alcohol dragster, well, this is a brand new vehicle as well, but they have run unbelievably well since uh, bringing that race car to the racetrack. Two new teams, and something that's going to be experimented with in the States next year. We are seeing it for the first time in Canada here today during this broadcast on Shaw. Hope you've enjoyed the race coverage thus far. The JB's Power Center Fall Spectacular here at Labad Raceway. Funny Car versus Dragster Grudge Race. Steve Sitko out of Edmonton. Vern Schultz in the Funny Car out of Calgary. Slight advantage right now, I would say, to Steve Sitko. 
mainly because of past performance during this weekend. But here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, Steve Sitko was sleeping at the switch as he's tried to make his way down the track, but the horsepower, you bet he's taking over, setting the fast speed of the day at 623, 225.56 miles an hour. That is the fastest speed of the day, ET and time. Sitko wins it, Schultz running at 824 at 134.34 miles an hour. So the dragster wins it, good showing though by the funny car as well. It is final time now in the Super Comp class. A driver who is uh, basically on his holidays making his way through the Edmonton area from Vernon, British Columbia. Kevin Kalatichuk, he's in the Super Comp Dragster with the wing going up against Byron Ziegler from Southern Alberta. He's from Olds. Index is 909 in the Super Comp class. That again is set down by the NHRA. The NHRA says if you're running Super Comp in Edmonton, you cannot go faster than 909 in the quarter mile. So that is the target for these two drivers. The electronics are set. The tune-up is set. Away we go. Final time in Super Comp. Advantage to Kaladi Chuck already a 405 reaction time. A perfect light is 400 at the finish line. He runs a 9.12 at 148.44 miles per hour on the 909 index. In red, a 9.05. You don't want to do that. Byron Ziegler from Olds went faster than the index of 909. He went 905. And that gives the win to Kaladi Chuck. And so, hey, quite the holiday for Kevin Kaladi Chuck from Vernon, BC, picking up the big win and heading home to Vernon with uh, some Alberta money. Good for him. It is Super Gas final time now here at Labad Raceway. The burnout's beginning. Dave Archambeau from Milo, Alberta. He is in the near lane, taking on Mike Priddle from St. Albert. Index in Super Gas is 10. 11. Don't go faster than that in the final. Reaction time advantage right off the bat. Dave Archambault. He left the line quicker than Mike Priddle at the finish line. Both drivers go faster than the posted index of 10-11. Closer to the index on the breakout side of things. It is Dave Archambault running a 10.09 at 128.04 miles an hour. Dave Archambault, your winner in the Super Gas class here this afternoon. Congratulations to Mike Priddle, your runner-up, running a 10.07 at 132.45 miles an hour. It is pro final now, the super pro final, I should say. This is going to be an excellent final. During the semifinals, both these two drivers ran their dial-ins exactly. The dial-ins are what you see in the brackets on your screen. Garnet Rose out of St. Albert in the Acadian convertible, dialed in with an 11.25. He will leave the start line first. Chasing him down will be Rick Ball in that Chevy Nova. Garnet Rose, the reaction time advantage for him. He left the line quicker than Rick Ball. Can Rick Ball catch him? He does not. In fact, oh boy, both drivers break out. They go faster than what they thought they were going to run in the quarter mile. But Derek er, Garnet Rose running an 11.24 on his 11.25 dial-in time. That's good enough for the win. And this is what a close finish looks like. Right at the finish line, Ball breaks out further or more than Garnet Rose. So Garnet Rose, your Super Pro champion here this afternoon at Labatt Raceway. A class that we have not seen yet today. There were 62 cars entered into eliminations this afternoon at Labatt Raceway. These are the best two. Your pro final. From Edmonton, Fred LaHaye in that 71 Chevelle, dialed in with a 1086. Adolph Saverin out of Edmonton, 67 Mustang, dialed in with an 1193. Those are the dial-ins. Saverin will leave first.
Oh, Adolf Sabrin jumps the gun and red light. So Fred LaHaye picks up the big win already. He doesn't even have to uh, try to beat his 1086 or meet his, oh, actually he goes faster than his dial-in time of 1086. He runs a 1081 at 123.69 miles an hour. Doesn't matter. Fred LaHaye, your winner. Another class we haven't seen yet this afternoon is the sportsman class. Street legal here at the track. Keith Mullen, 88 Nissan. Dialing with an 18.50. He is away. Doug Duwar, 79 pickup, will play catch up. Oh, and Doug Duwar jumps the gun and red lights. Keith Mullen, oh, he sees he's won already. Raises his hand in the air inside that car. I've won. You betcha you have, Keith Mullen. You are the sportsman champion here this afternoon at Labatt Raceway, running an 1868, 72.53 miles an hour. Mullen, your winner. Doug Duar, your runner-up, because he jumped the gun and red lit, left the line before the green go light was flashed. Well, it's been a quick broadcast here at Shaw this afternoon at Labatt Raceway. The JB's Power Center. Fall spectacular, and we've got the motorcycle final up and running. Both these two riders. In the far lane, Dave Weeb out of Edmonton, 77 Kawasaki drag bike, dialing with a 10-2-5. This is his fifth final round appearance in a row. He's got four or three wins. One runner-up. What will it be today? Kevin Boyer, the winningest rider on two wheels here at the track, dialing with an 887. Dave Weeb leaves first. A 482 reaction time. Kevin Boyer, the better reaction time. Dave Weeb will not be able to hang on. Kevin Boyer will nip him at the finish line, and he does indeed. An 892, 133.76 miles an hour for Kevin Boyer, your winner. Runner-up, Dave Weeb, running a 10-2-8 at 117.64 miles an hour. And that is it for our broadcast here. I hope you've enjoyed it as we take a look at the replay of the final in the motorcycle class. I'm Gord Craig. You take care.